Smash Drunk. Hey, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X2. And uh, let's run some errands. Let's head back to Morph Moth real quick because there's something we can get here uh, fairly quickly, I think. And while we're here, let's let's keep talking about drugs. Because, <laughs> hey, let's face it, Mega Man is a drug after all. You can't just stop at one game. It's a dick thing. It's, you become physically dependent on playing Mega Man. And if you don't play it, you go through some pretty hefty withdrawal syndrome. Symptoms? Sim symptoms. Anyway, what else was there? I was talking about cocaine. Yeah, do, I, I would not ever recommend cocaine. Yeah, you want to get the buzzsaw here. Um, and it's just right at this point here, after that second uh, red pole. You go down here, and there's your capsule. And it's Santa Claus. Oh, it's Dr. Light. I forget I'm... I'm I, there are people, you know... There, there are dozens of people that could potentially be watching this. So I scroll past the text. Anyway, with this power up, with this upgrade, you get a vest. Looks like, <laughs> looks like Mega Man's wearing a band uniform. Yeah, there's your demonstration though. He uh, gets uh, hit enough times so that the meter thing fills up, and uh, he can release it as kind of like a. Like a sneeze or an orgasm or however you want to <laughs> crass, however you want to crassly describe it. Anyway, I think we should progress with. Uh, is there any other stuff I can do? Probably not. Let's go to Crystal Snail and his fabulous introduction. So anyway. This is a cool stage. I like this. St There's a lot of hidden stuff here. And uh, using the dash on this stage is really fun. God, Mega Man looks so goofy with that armor. It really does look like he's wearing like a high school band uniform. Oh, I love this right here. Oh, that's not the part I was thinking of. It's always fun to get these things. Now, how do I get this over there again? There's a way to stay in this. Do I go down here now? I know I go down one of those pits. All right, let's keep going here. Anyway, yeah, um, like I was saying in the last episode, I think certain drugs just are more compatible with certain people, with certain personalities, with their wiring than with other people. Like, for example, I can't smoke pot. Like, I just can't. I, it's been ruined for me because... Uh, uh, I'll tell you a story while I'm fighting this uh, little mini boss here. Um, once upon a time, my old roommate Ryan, uh, he went to Ecuador and he came back with this um, uh, wheat butter made from weed or whatever. Might as well demonstrate this thing. And <laughs> it didn't really do a whole lot. Anyway. He came back with this like weed butter, and uh, months, you know, and it's and he, I remember him telling me about it and like what it does. And it's like it's really strong and it's awesome. And it's like okay, don't want any part of that. So like a month goes by. Um, I come home from work one day and I notice there's this um, there there are a batch of cookies that have been sitting in this Tupperware thing for a long time, for weeks, and. What's up here? Oh, just these stupid things. It's a trap. It's a trap. I, I noticed these cookies that have been sitting there. And uh, w there's just one in particular that's been sitting there for weeks and weeks. And one day I come home from work and there's like nothing to eat. And I'm just like, oh, ah, shit. I didn't get out in time. Wow. That is some, that is a bad job by me. Um, yeah, anyway, this one cookie had just been sitting there forever, and there was nothing to eat, and I was just like, oh, fine, I'll, I'll be the bad roommate, I'll eat this, since nobody else seems to want it. And uh, I'm eating it, and I'm like, oh, this cookie tastes kind of weird, I wonder what it is. Um, let me concentrate here so I can get past this part. Come on, you stupid ice block crystal thing. There we go. 
Anyway, yeah, the cookie tastes kind of funny. <laughs> and, like, literally 10 minutes later, I'm like, I'm, I remember walking down the stairs and being like, like, tasting my mouth and, like, thinking about my mouth for, like, a minute and just being like, wait a second, why am I stoned? I'm stoned. How did this happen? And it didn't stop there. Because when I ate this cookie, I freaking Homer Simpson style ate it. I just gulped it down. So, um, yeah. I ended up eating a pot cookie made from that weed butter that my friend, my roommate bought in Ecuador. And I had the worst panic attack in my entire life. And uh, I remember I had a, a, I was taking classes at the time. I had a math class that, that evening. I remember being so terrified to call because there was no way I was going to drive a vehicle. Um, anyway, yeah, you, you use the magnet gun to blow the shell off this uh, enemy. What are, what's his name again? Crystal Snail? Yeah. And go like that. Oh, shit, that's right. He flies at you. Got to dodge that. But he goes right back to his shell, and he does some interesting effects that really crank, really test the hardware in the Super Nintendo. Maybe I'll eventually I'll let him. Oh, here we go. Trippy. Yeah, it's ironic that I'm talking about weed as he's doing this. And dash. Yeah, it really gives the game a lot of slowdown when he does that, but it's still a cool effect. Anyway, yeah, I ate a pot cookie made from Ecuadorian weed butter. I like, just gulped it down. I was just out of my mind stoned to the point of a really, really bad panic attack. Uh, like heavy, like I, like my heart was beating about a thousand beats a minute. I c couldn't breathe. And I was just laying on my bed for like eight hours, just freaking out. It was not fun. <laughs> I can't handle pot. I mean, it was. I mean, obviously, that's like a overdose for most. I mean, for most people, if they ate that shit. Anyway, the weapon we get is Crystal Hunter. Does it hunt women named Crystal? That's a bad joke. <laughs> the only other time uh, during my delinquent days, when I when I had a really bad pot experience, let's go back to Morph Moth because there's something I can do with this weapon. Um. Here's how ghetto I used to be. I think I was 21. I had bought an eighth of an ounce of pot from a friend of mine um, that I worked with. Oh, that's not who I shoot. I shoot this uh, frisbee guy up here. Um, yeah, this guy right here. You gotta use the crystal weapon that you just obtained, and he becomes a nice little crystal thing and you jump up there you get a free guy and you get a heart container hooray anyway yeah I used to make um, I was too cheap to buy a pipe or a bong or anything like that so I just made my own pipes out of pop cans or soda cans and uh, you know kind of crinkle it a bit at one end and uh, poke some holes in it with a thumbtack and you you roast it there <laughs> it's so ghetto but I remember um I bought an eighth from somebody, and they said it was, like, just really shitty. Like, I only paid 20 bucks for it, and they said it was really shitty. Turns out it was not really shitty, and it was really, really, really strong. And um, the Louis C.K. bit on weed, if you've never seen that, it describes it perfectly. Where he goes, oh, shit, this is an ordeal now. <laughs> like, that's exactly how I felt. I was driving home when it kicked in. And I had to pull over, and I think I sat there for about 45 minutes just having a panic attack. It was awful. I don't even remember what's in this part. What is in this part? Is this one of those stupid... Yeah, this is a dumb... Ugh. Don't feel like fighting those guys. I don't think there's even anybody here anyway. Are we coming on... Yeah, we're coming close to the end of the episode here. Maybe I'll have more drug stories for you. I've got a couple more. Let's hop on this bike, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.